united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Mark Schumacher with Jesus Chapel, and welcome to the Wednesday, September 4th, 2019 edition of United with Christ. We're so glad you're here to join us today. It's been our pleasure to host for the month of August, and uh, through September we'll be hosting on Wednesdays, and glad to be able to be here. We really enjoy the station. As I've mentioned quite a few times, it's really Channel 38. It's a clearinghouse for the things going on in the body of Christ, not only in El Paso, but really around the world. And Unfortunately, today I'm by myself. My cohort, my, our associate pastor, teaching pastor of the Spanish service, Robert, is under the weather today. He was up in Wisconsin. Maybe it was too cool up there and he's, he's sick. But this would be the time where I'd say, hey, Robert, are there any interesting things coming up this month? And they would turn the camera to Robert and he said, I am so glad you asked that, Mark, because uh, Thursday night, next Thursday night, September 12th, at Harvest Christian Center, church on the west side there on Gateway, is the Paul Wilbur concert celebrating, we're going to be celebrating the 30th anniversary of KSCE TV. 30 years, think about that. Someone once told me that after 25 years, a ministry either tends to grow or it tends to decline because the original founders are gone and people begin to lose the vision. But what we see with the, since their last five years has continued to grow and grow and exciting new things are happening at KSCE. So next Thursday night, September 12th at Harvest Christian Center, Paul Wilbur concert. Tickets are $10 if you get in advance and $12 at the door. Uh, the following night is the and there's gala banquet, and that'll be at the Wyndham Hotel at 6.30 p.m., and that's $50 in tickets. Uh, you can get those in advance. I don't think they're selling them at the door. Uh, we plan on being there. Jesus Chapel will uh, commit to buying a table if I have to pay for it myself. But God bless, but join us for there. And I'm going to continue. Uh, again, I, like I said, I miss Robert being here. He's such an easy go-to guy. If I stumble and can't think of anything, I can throw it to him, and he's just a natural at this. So I'm doing this alone for the first time. And so if we have 27 minutes of blank screen, you know, you forgive me or whatever. But i uh, got to trust God for this. We've been in the book of Genesis, and we've talked about how the Old Testament is so rich its story is so rich, and you know Paul clearly says, obviously, the times of Moses, uh, the children of Israel were written for our admonition, whom the ends of the earth come, and and I believe you can apply that to the whole Old Testament. It's written for us, you know. Paul tells Timothy, all scriptures, you know, God breathed and written for instruction and correction and reproof. So there's such rich lessons, and, and we find out that these. Old Testament stories, you know, the stories we learned in Sunday school, when we look at them again through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, there's, there's so much deep truths and nuggets in there. We decided we've done a series on Genesis in the beginning, in La Primera, in Espanol, and it's been a, a great series, and so we're going to continue in that today. And, and last week we left with the, uh, two weeks prior when I was gone on vacation, uh, Robert did uh, the, the, the fault when they fell and they began the blame game. No, it was that woman you gave me. No, the snake told me that. And then we looked last week at really what we called the curses, and we said in some ways they weren't curses, is that God said, you know, Adam, you're going to have to toil the land now. You used to go pick trees, but now you're going to have to work and toil the land. But we are created beings in his image, and we're made to be creative. And if we don't be creative, it meant it really messes us up emotionally and mentally. And he said, okay, I'm going to use your stomach as a thing that's going to make you work so you will be creative. And thus we toil in the land. And so... After this, they were thrown out of the garden. That's where I'm going to begin today in uh, chapter uh, 3, 22. It said, uh, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Interesting again, the word us there. It's always been the plural. The Trinity has always been there. He's not saying like he's us like the angels. He said, No, man has become like us to know good and evil. And unless oh, he put out his hand and take of the tree of life and live forever, we're going to throw him out of here. 
Now remember we told you that God told them they could eat of any tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, here's this tree in the garden, the tree of life. Apparently they didn't need it before this because they had eternal life or whatever. But God's saying now that sin has come in and they know good from evil and chose evil, they can't take of the tree of life. We cannot live forever, have eternal life as we call it, in a sinful state. And so they're thrown out of the garden and he drove, the, he drove out the man and placed a cherub at the east of the Garden of Eden in a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. You know, I, I shared with our congregation when we did this, if you go back to the four rivers, there's two of them, the Tigris and Euphrates, and the two others no longer exist. Those run through the heart of uh, Iraq, which I lived at in 2003 through 2007. I lived in that area, you know. And uh, what happens when you have a bunch of plush land and it, it goes away? You get oil. Where are some of the greatest oil reserves in the world? Right there in the Mesopotamian region. So our story goes on. It says, now Adam knew his wife after they'd been taken out of the garden and she conceived and bore Cain or she acquired a son. And the word Cain kind of means to acquire. She acquired a man. Remember, this is the first child born, the, first, the third person in, in the line of human beings. And she bore again, and this time she bore a brother, Abel. Now, I thought I knew what his name meant. Ab El, Ab is God, El is, or Ab is father, El is God. And I thought, ah, father of God, but actually the Hebrew there is Hab El. <coughs> and it m m does not actually mean that. And so our story continues. It said, in the process of time, time goes on. Here we have this, they've left the garden She's born some children, and obviously they've grown up. And it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Now, interesting enough, a lot's been talked about these offerings and everything. Isn't it interesting that the first offering was Cain? And it says, And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat. Now, remember, at this time, people didn't eat meat. They were eating of all the vegetables, all the fruit and vegetables of the land they were able to eat. We really don't see man eating meat until after Noah's Ark. And it said the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but the Lord did not respect Cain and his offering. Now, I'm not going to get into the theology of some people say because Cain didn't offer blood, uh, you know, God didn't respect it. Uh, that's, an, that's a teaching for another day, I guess. I just wanted to, to look at this, but it said, first of all, he respected Abel and his offering. He did not respect Cain or, and, or his offering. And Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. And countenance, I'm using New King James Version, is a, a, a cool word, you know. It's, it's kind of like the, the whole the face drops or whatever, but our whole demeanor or whatever might be a better word that we would use today. You can see the sadness in there. And there's a thing about us is that, you know, if we don't please God, there's an anger in us, but there's also a sorrow in us. So God in his mercy, he speaks to Cain. He said, Cain, why are you angry? What's wrong? And he goes, and why, has, why have you become, you know, despondent? Why has your countenance fallen? And he tells him, if you do well, will you not be accepted? So I think there's more than meat and blood and, and grain here. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And this is kind of the gospel. If you do well, will you not be accepted? We know it's impossible for us to do well outside of Jesus Christ. If we, under the blood, we do well and we are accepted. But if you do not do well, sin lies at your door and it's desires for you, but you should rule over. He goes, if you don't do well, here is sin lying at your door. And that's so true in our life. If, if I'm not walking in the fullness of the Spirit, if I'm not walking in fellowship, if I'm not in the Word myself, if I'm not praying, if I'm not part of a congregation, I'm not doing well in what lies at the door sin. Remember, we're told the devil is like a roaring lion, prowling around, seeking who he ever he can to pounce on and destroy. And that's so true in our life. Sin's desire is for us, 
but we should rule over us. Now, thank goodness we live in the New Testament because Jesus destroyed the power of sin. Before we became to the Lord, sin had dominion of us. Paul says we were slaves to sin. And now we've been freed from that bondage. Do we still sin? Yes. Unfortunately, we are fallible human beings. We haven't figured this out. We don't have it all together. But our lives do not have to be under the bondage of sin. We have been freed for that. And part of our thing in the body of Christ is to exhort one another, encourage one another. This does not have to control your life. Your wants, your lust, your desires do not have to be the controlling issue of your life. Jesus has set us free. That's the good news. That's part of the gospel. He set us free that we might know the true God in Jesus Christ whom he sent, which Jesus said in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that we would know the true God. So God says, you should rule over it. Well, what does Cain do? It said, now Cain talked with his brother, and it came to pass as they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. So here, again, we have the first murder of a human being in the first generation after Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve lived in Eden, everything perfect, eternal life, naked, unashamed, free to walk with God. God would come down and walk with them. And then they sinned, first emotion, they were afraid. And here they are, the first two of their children on the face of the earth, the older one slays the other one. And then God comes to Cain in verse 9 in chapter 4 and says, Cain, where is your brother? Now God knows, right? Remember when he said, Adam, when after they sinned and hid, Adam, where are you? God knew. Cain, Cain, where's your brother? And Cain, I don't know. <laughs> Our first thing is, I don't know. I didn't know it. Am I responsible for him? Am I my brother's keeper? I mean, he's grown up. What do I have to do with him? And God says, Cain, what is it you've done? Again, the same thing he asked uh, Adam. What is it you've done? You ate of that tree. Well, the woman gave it to me. What is it you've done? Well, the serpent gave it to me. What is it you've done, Cain? You, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. You know, we, we forget life is sacred in God's eyes. You know, he created life, only he has the right to take life. If we take another life, there was a penalty in the Old Testament, and we forfeit our life, a life for life, to remind us how precious life is. We don't have the right to take another person's life. So here's Cain, he's angry, his countenance is down. God warns him, and he goes out there, and he's talking with his brother, and then he kills him. Obviously, he, he didn't work it out. There was a, the emotions of jealousy, anger, all these things that came after sin. Remember, the first emotion was fear that came upon Adam. And we hid ourselves because we were naked. Now we have envy, jealousy, pride, all these things. And here it leads to taking of another life. And, and this is the, the sad story of human beings. This is the, our flesh. This is who we are. This is the lesson that we have. How quickly the fall affected mankind from idealism to uh, killing family side. I don't remember what the word is for that. So God says, your brother's blood cries out to me the ground. So he, said, he curses Cain. Remember the parents got a curse. He said, so now you are cursed from the Lord, the earth, I'm sorry, which has op it's opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood because the ground took your brother's blood. Remember, the ground was cursed for Adam because of his sin, and he would have to toil. And Robert had a great teaching last week about the different plants. All in the early Genesis, all of it was like fruit and good for eating. And then there was these plants of the field. You know, all of a sudden we have thistles and thorns and weeds and all those things. And not only this, he says, on top of this, the ground is cursed for you. When can you till the ground, it will no longer yield its strength for you. It's no longer going to yield food for you. You're, you're just, you're, the ground is totally cursed. And he goes, you're going to be a fugitive and a vagabond upon the earth. 
you shall be. You're going to be an outcast because you have done this horrible thing. And then the Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Oh, he doesn't know anything about punishment. You know, uh, eternal separation from God is a much, much worse punishment. And we live in a world today that's beating a, a drum on its way straight to hell because they refuse to acknowledge the Lord. And, and the punishment they have is much more than being a vagabond and a fugitive. Is it interesting that uh, the book of Hebrews says we as Christians are strangers and pilgrims on this earth, that he was made it by a curse. We are because we're no longer of this world. We're part of the kingdom of God right now. So we're, why we live on this earth, our citizenship is in heaven. And so we are strangers and pilgrims on this earth. But Cain says it's greater than I can bear. Now, I want you to listen. This is verse uh, 414. I want you to listen to these pronouns. Surely you, talking to the Lord, have driven me out, God, from the face of the ground. Again, he's blaming God. It's always God's fault, isn't it? I just didn't get a fair deal, you know. I was born into poverty, or my parents got divorced, or whatever, or my, my father died when I was young, or whatever, my, my brother did this or whatever. I got fired from my job when it was a mistake or whatever. It's always someone else's fault. And we're, and we're going to be sinned against in this world. We're going to be offenses was come. But as, you know, my good friend uh, Dale Walker always says, you know, God is in the business of forgiving sin, not forgiving mistakes or blaming other people. If I blame other people, Lord, I, when we come to him, we say, I am a sinner. I am a sinner saved by grace. We, just as I am without one plea is that old hymn is how we have to come to God to be forgiven of our sins. We can't say it's because my parents didn't raise me right or it's this or that church treated me bad. Uh-uh. We come to God, again, I, I shared, I think, about that we come spiritually naked before God, kind of like Adam and Eve were physically naked before him. To come to God, we must come without the baggage of that sin and, and lay it at his feet or whatever. You have driven me out. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. Do you see the human heart? Remember when Isaiah talks about the, the Satan? I will be lifted up. I will be exalted or whatever. The I, 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 me, myself, and I. It's one of those lessons I get. These things written, for example, Lord, I see myself so much in this. I, I see myself that life is about me. Life, you know, when am I going to eat? I don't want to eat that. You know, wife and I are going to go out to eat dinner. Where would you like to eat? She goes, I don't care, and I'll pick a place. I don't like that. Well, that's what I want to eat or whatever. You know, and, and, and we're like that. It's about me. It's about me. And no, it's really about Jesus, isn't it? It really is. Are we really bond servants to him? Are we really slaves to him? We have a lot of grace in this life, and I find that this me, me, I, I is so prevalent in our hearts. And it's one of those things that, unless we're aware of it, and, and I love when uh, James says, confess your faults to one another, pray for one another that you can be healed. Sometimes we need to confess to one another. You know, Robert, I'm, I'm this I, I guy. I put myself first. This is about me. This is about me. And it's there. And sometimes God has to send brothers and sisters to us to show us our blind side, doesn't he? Mark, you really were harsh in talking to your wife there. I mean, are you honoring your wife as you're supposed to honor? Are you loving her as Christ loved the church? Or did she make you mad because she didn't want to eat at the restaurant you wanted to eat at? Well, well, you know, she did. You know, no, <laughs> it's that woman you gave me, Lord. No, it doesn't work that way, does it? My wife is a gift. It is a gift. The things we have in our lives. I, I hope we're the... Antithesis of I, I, I is gratitude, isn't it? Lord, thank you for this day. We can, that's one way we can say, give us this day. Lord, thank you for this day. 
thank you for this daily bread. Lord, thank you for we live in this world. First of all, I always thank you for salvation, Lord. Thank you that you saved me and called me out of darkness, translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom or the reign of your dear son. Lord, thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that your spirit dwells in us and reminds us and bears witness to you and is supposed to be guarding our heart and forgive us when we quench the spirit by allowing our flesh that eye, eye to come up. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that you've given us your complete word, Father. And I have it in a paper form. I read it in a Kindle. I have it on my phone. It's on my desktop at work. It's available everywhere. Thank you that we have the freedom to print and buy it. I can have three, four translations on my phone and on my desktop and Gateway Bible. I can look at it in a dozen translations in our Spanish service. I, got, I could look at six, seven, eight, nine Spanish translations to find one that goes there. It's just phenomenal. Thank you for your word that, you know, is hidden deep in our heart. And then it's like, thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you for the church you plug me into. Father, thank you for KC, KSCE Channel 38, that we have an alternative, Father, alternative to the world, alternative to those that, uh, you know, the, the, the values of the world, that here is Christians from all over the city, different denominations, even across the world, even in the Spanish, even in Spanish, English, and even in the Arabic language, your name is being glorified. Thank you for that, Lord. Wow, thank you. Thank you that we got to get up this morning. Thank you we live in a country that's free, that I don't have to hide my Bible to come here. or I, I can't talk about Christ or whatever. I could be arrested for that. Thank you, Lord. We, we take these things for granted and then because I, 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 I need this, I need this. And it's like, no, Lord, thank you. So I, I would hope that one of the lessons we get out there is be grateful. God is merciful. And here Cain cries out, oh, you know, woe is me. Anyone will kill me and everything. And God kind of hears him and answers this prayer. And it kind of reminds me of Lot. If, you know, if you get future in the book of Genesis, there's Lot. Hurry up, Lot. Hurry up, Lot. Get out of Sodom. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the morning they said, Lot, you need to leave now. We can't do anything. And they, they take him out and, and they tell him to go to the mountains. He goes, oh, I can't go to the mountains. Oh, you know, people will attack me. Can I go to this small city? So they let him to go to this uh, city. Zophar's over. And he goes down there. We'll read later that Lot leaves Zophar and goes to the mountains, you know. So whatever. It's like, uh, you know, it's, he's crying, okay, go to Zophar. We'll spare the city. Go there because you're whining or whatever. And here's kind of Cain. They're going to kill me. And so the Lord makes a promise, okay, Lord, I'm going to protect your life, the Lord says. The Lord said, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest anyone finding him would kill him. Now, that's, that's a very interesting concept. Uh, a lot has been said about the mark of Cain, what is, and we'll get into that in a minute. But first of all, God said, okay, here you are. It's been about, you know, I can't do this. I'm a vagabond. I, 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 and people will kill me. Okay, I'm going to make sure no one kills you. And if anyone kills you, they're going to go against my will and they will be punished sevenfold. So it said the Lord set a mark and that Hebrew word is oth, which kind of means sign or whatever, upon him. Now, interesting enough, that sign was a physical protection for him. You know, we always think it's a horrible type thing, but it was actually for people to see him and not kill him because God promised him he would live. Now, I think that what was the sign and what was the mark of Cain? <laughs> I think that's one of those mysteries that nobody knows. It's kind of like who are the sons of God who came down and had uh, relationships with the daughters of men and giants were born. It's kind of like Melchizedek. It's kind of like these things who are the horsemen in the book of Zechariah that say that go to and forth across the earth. Are they literal men? I think these are those mysterious things that we're going to find out, you know, when we get to heaven. But one thing we know, the mark has nothing to do with racial, okay? It never, never, never any implication in the Bible that it had anything to do with that. If it did, 
those descendants of Cain died out during the flood, right? So whatever that mark was is long gone. People used it, misinterpreted it, and abused it. Again, it was about I, I, I better than you, you, you. Aren't these rich lessons in the Old Testament? I mean, here we are. We study this in Sunday school and we see it. Again, the offering to the Lord, when we bring our praise to the Lord, is it something that's acceptable unto him? You know, God loves us. Again, I mentioned John 17, 3. This is eternal life that they might know you, the true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. And this is what God wants to be known by us. And God, if we know him, we love him. And when we bring that praise, when we bring that sacrifice of praise and come to him and are grateful to him and say, glory to you, God, glory to you. We worship you because you're worthy of all praise and glory and honor. We're just so thankful for your grace and your mercy. Amen. So I want to remind you as we're getting ready to close here, what are the upcoming events for the coming weeks? Next Thursday night, September 12th at Harvest Christian Center right down the road from us. Paul Wilburn concert. Tickets $10 in advance and $12 at the gates. And then next Friday night, Friday the 13th, because we don't believe in superstition, uh, 6.30 p.m., the 30th annual gala for KSCE Channel uh, 38 TV at the Wyndham El Paso International Airport. Tickets are $50 in advance. I don't think they're available at the gate. So I thank you for this day. We just bless you, and I'm just going to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. And thank you for the wonderful body of Christ, Father. Thank you that uh, this station, Lord, that's been on the air 30 years and the great things you're doing, Lord, that so many things, Father. Thank you for the different ministries that share here, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Again, it's, we don't want to be me, me, me. We want to be grateful. Thank you we have Christian TV. Thank you, we have Christian media. Thank you, 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 this town has wonderful churches all across this city, Father. And thank you for sustaining Channel 38 for 30 years to offer an alternative, Father. I pray you bless everyone hearing, Father. And this day be a day that we just glorify you and thank you and we praise you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen.